Does equipoise destroy the kidney? So today that's what we're going to try and investigate. Um, I'm Dr. Downey and thank you for watching this video. So um, equipoise, also known as baldenone, um, is, uh, well stated in the name, uh, uh, you, there's equine which is related to horse, so it is a, a, a steroid that was commonly used in horses. Um, I'm not going to go in detail into the drug profile of it specifically, I'm just more or less going to talk about its potential nephrotoxic, which means, which in this case is also going to mean um, toxic to the kidney, those effects. And this is in response to the drug profile page on Reddit. Um, I'm just going to respond to that because I disagree with what they are saying. Um, so the reason why, it, so this study was one of the uh, first studies done with equipoise in um, humans and more specifically they were looking at um, the effect on the kidneys because it's been demonstrated in rabbits that um, boldenone therapy has resulted in things like uh, tubular necrosis which is the tubules within the uh, nephrons of the kidneys being damaged, inflammatory cells invading the kidney, uh, invading the um, the nephrons, as well as damage of the glomerulus. So, um, some of you already may know that equipoise is dangerous or toxic to the kidneys, or may not, and it came from this study um, where it said uh, it was. Um, it's called Evaluation of Anabolic Steroid Induced Renal Damage with Sonography in Bodybuilders. Sonography, also synonymous with um, ultrasound. And as with most studies on steroids, they're not really done well and are laced with problems and full of criticism. So in this particular study, they had 22 bodybuilders and they're split into three groups, group one, um, I'll display it on the page, got 500 test E, 400 Nandrolone or DECA, and uh, 40 D-Bol. And then group 2 had the 500 tests, 300 Nandrolone, 300 Baldenone, which is the equipoise. Group 3 had no steroid intake. And the um, markers they were looking at were the urea, creatinine, microalbumin, and electrolyte levels. However, they weren't shown in the study. I, the, electrolyte, <laughs> the electrolyte levels were not shown. And then they also did ultrasound specifically looking at renal volume, so the volume of the kidney. Cortical thickness, which is like the cortex of the kidney is where most of the, uh, where uh, the um, nephrons reside. So that's like the functioning part of the kidney. Um, and echogenicity, um, so the cortic uh, cortical thickness and echogenicity. Echogenicity just means it becomes a less dense, which is tends to be synonymous with um, death of that particular part, however not always. So um, I just wanted to critique whether or not um, ultrasound really has a place in the study because its use is only really in um, chronic kidney disease where uh, you can stage uh, chronic kidney disease as well as see which parts are damaged and in acute kidney disease where you are trying to identify a cause whether you look through a Doppler ultrasound at the blood flow and things like that. Um, but chronic kidney disease develops over is after three months and acute kidney disease is within 48 hours. And the study wasn't really looking at that, it was just looking for structural changes. And we'll see, I tried looking up whether or not ultrasound has good predictability of renal damage. So does ultrasound, if you notice something different, does it have a good predictability? So I had, uh, there weren't many studies on subacute uh, kidney injury, but there were some on acute injury. And it just said, um, it just mentioned things like 
uh, the thickness of the cortex will differentiate whether it's acute kidney disease versus chronic kidney disease because acute will have thicker, increased, and more echogenic uh, cortices, whereas a chronic kidney disease, the cortex becomes thin because all the nephrons start dying. And um, usually in acute kidney injury, there tends to be a lot of edema and infiltration of that area, so it becomes a lot larger. But the only issue is we don't know what a thick cortex means and you need a baseline ultrasound in order to get uh, to establish whether or not this cortex is thick in this particular patient and they didn't do a baseline ultrasound so it's not it's it, it, it's not the best parameter to look at um and um whilst um it just, if there is an ultrasound abnormality, we don't really know what it means. It's not very specific, but, um, and in most cases in acute injuries, there are no abnormalities found, um, unless there's a, a, the, it usually just finds the underlying cause of the acute injury, like an obstruction or something. So it's, uh, I just don't think it's a great, um, parameter to include in the study and they didn't really define why they were using it and they mentioned in their discussion that it's not very specific um, and it it doesn't really impact your conclusion that much in this uh, in that sense so again my criticism is that there were also no baseline urea and electrolyte um, levels because these bodybuilders are already taking so much protein and may have already been on steroids for years and they already had and that's resulted in their decreased function so there's nothing to compare it to and again whilst biopsy is quite invasive and not necessary and not that necessary it could help to see if there was in fact um, renal disease within the kidney and and, and they didn't really measure anything else like urine output. Did that change during the study? Because that's important to differentiate different types of kidney injury. There's urine retention and things like that. Um, and it's also important to look at the fractional secretion of things like sodium and urea and calculate ratios. So if there is damage, we could possibly tell where the damage is occurring. And I'll show this table. But this is more for acute injury, which develops over 48 hours, which we aren't looking at in this study. But uh, so these are the results, as you can see in group two, which was the equipoise group, there is quite a, there is a very significant, the p-value was less than 0 0.001 um, increase in um, crea uh, in urea. Well, I can't even say increase because there was no baseline level. Um, uh, however, it was elevated and so was the creatinine. They were both elevated. But another problem is, as you can see, the dietary protein intake, which is a confounding variable because that does have studies showing that it impacts um, markers of kidney disease, that wasn't controlled. And in the group with the worst uh, kidney um urea and uh, creatinine, they had the highest protein intake, so you can't really say for sure which it was. Because if you look at group 1 and group 3, their parameters are more or less normal, and this group 1 was using steroids also. So it's very difficult um, to draw a def definite conclusions about its direct link to being a, a nephrotoxic. Um, so that was in terms of the blood test. They said they were looking at electrolytes. I don't know which ones they were looking at because they weren't included. Um, but in terms of, uh, ultrasound, this is interesting because the cortex was enlarged, um, in group two, as well as renal volume was increased quite significantly. Again, there wasn't a baseline, so maybe they already had large kidneys, but it just, it found that the, um, in a separate study, which I'll show above, 
it actually found that kidney size of a patient with acute damage is significantly larger than the healthier controls. So this increase in renal volume could indicate possible damage, but it's still, it's not definitive. So in conclusion, what can we take from this particular study? It's a poor study. Protein intake, which is a major contributory uh, factor, was not controlled. And so they noticed that in their study, which is why they concluded that uh, boldenone plus uh, pro high protein intake is nephrotoxic because I couldn't ex uh, pin it down to one or the other because the other two uh, groups had the same amount of protein intake um, and one was still using steroids and uh, but the and the other wasn't using steroids yet they still had the same measurements so now I just wanted to respond to that drug profile on reddit because um, a lot of people tend to take their advice from these Reddit pages, and I do appreciate the work that these uh, moderators and contributors uh, make in trying to educate people about these drugs. However, I think this particular criticism, this, so the, the, on the steroid profile of equipoise or baldenone, this study uh, was criticized by an individual, I don't know who, but it was on the profile, and this is what it said. So, in a, a study on the baldenone, on baldenone's effects of, of the kidney, evaluation of anabolic steroid-induced renal damage with sonography and bodybuilders showed renal enlargement during the blast, which was true. But functionality was normal the whole time. That wasn't true. I, well, what do you mean by functionality? They didn't look at urine output. If they mean that as in terms of um, functionality, um, they also mentioned the enzymes were normal. They didn't look at any enzymes and metabolites. They didn't look at metabolites either, and they said they weren't elevated or out of range. Whereas, in fact, the urea and creatinine were in fact out of range, and all physiological. Uh, I assume they mean pathological abnormalities because it wasn't really physiological resolved upon cessation. I, they, that wasn't included in the study so I don't know where they pulled that from. Um, and then they go on to say uh, this is one of many animal studies on baldenone and kidney damage which prompted many to claim baldenone is particularly kidney toxic. Uh, this is nonsense. Well, it isn't. This is one of the first um, trials in uh, humans, and there definitely seem to be uh, renal damage in uh, one way or another. And um, so that, uh, uh, and this statement doesn't really mean that it's it's not valid, even though we have, uh, there are other studies saying it's nephrotoxic, so that's good. It, it, I mean, it's not good, it just means then it is nephrotoxic. Um, so, so they just wanted to go on to um, say, yet similar uh, detrimental effects on kidney function have since been observed from other steroids. This seems to be a red herring because we're not really discussing other steroids, we're dis discussing equipoise here and whether or not other steroids are also uh, nephrotoxic um, doesn't really uh, mean that equipoise isn't. Um, so they use the case of nandrolone, which is more than twice, uh, uh, which is twice nephrotoxic than baldenone at the same dosage. Um, well, this study is uh, is poor is uh, poor because it's an animal study, whereas in the study we just had it was a human study, which did include nandrolone, and it found the nandrolone group was uh, uh, did not have as drastic changes in their parameters. So, um, I just think this, um, this needs to be revised and there should be at least a warning on the possibility of renal abnormalities and that it should be checked while cycling equipoise. Uh, and, um, and, uh, the, and it just should, it should mention that, um, although the reverse, uh, the, the, um, 
damages reversed upon cessation of the drug. That doesn't mean the drug isn't necessarily harmful. It just it would mean that the drug is harmful because um, drugs like non-steroidal infl anti-inflammatories are particularly nephrotoxic, but you'll find when they're stopped, the kidneys seem to improve. That doesn't mean they're not harmful, so I, I think it should be revised. But yeah, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.